Welcome to the Tech Class. Thank you for deciding to join this uh, live review. This is a very, I have a very quick question for us to talk about. This is a straightforward question. Something you've seen before, but this time around, I change it a little bit. Look at it. I'm not going to give you a bunch of information, but it's a question. You look at a case, you come up with your plan, and then you answer questions that you need to. You should do that when you're doing your review, like you get a case study, you find one case, think about how it's going to be presented, what is your plan, take care of it, and you move on. That's how you study for next generation and class, basically. You find, if it's colocystitis, write down the way they will present it, what is your management, what do you think they will ask you, plan of care, and things you're supposed to do. That's all. So this is the case. Look at it. It's a very long case, but it does not have too much information that you should worry about, right? You know this already. 18 years old, male, is in the emergency room due to erratic behavior. Client has been doing what? Well in college, but withdrew for no apparent reason. He broke up with his girlfriend recently. The parents are worried because of what? Recent purchase of Tesla. You got a new car. Client looked disheveled on presentation and missing several of his buttons on the shirt. He has not taken shower for five days and claimed to see dead people walking. Does that have any clue? This is the way they usually ask side questions. It's a little bit confusing. There's a lot of information. You don't know what to pay attention to. Client reports not having time to eat and has been sleeping for only, what, three hours a day. When I ask you if you want to harm himself, he shrugged his shoulders. Client cannot stay at one place for assessment. He shifted from one topic to another. Mood was elevated and is easily distracted. The parents reported that he has been cleaning the house for the past three days nonstop. He claimed to be a movie star. Client was talking throughout the evaluation. A very long case, right? That's the way they usually will ask you these side questions, mental health questions. I mean, you don't know where to start, where to go, what to follow up on, which areas are the ways of key facts. Just don't worry about it. Just stay back, read it again. But with the intention of trying to figure out what is going on with this patient. Just make a diagnosis and then you'll be fine. If you make the diagnosis, the rest of the case is easy. If you can make a diagnosis, then you can answer the question. He's 18 years old. There's a reason why they give you the age. He came in with what? Erotic behavior, right? He's doing well in college, but all of a sudden he withdrew for no apparent reason. Why did he leave his college? He broke up with his girlfriend, relationship issue. The parents are worried because, re uh, because of recent purchase, spending too much money. He bought a Tesla. Client look disheveled. He's not taking care of himself and missing several of his buttons on the shirt. So he's not dressing well. He has not taken shower for five days. He's smelling not good. He claimed to see what dead people. Yeah, that's not good either. Client reports not having time to eat, so he's not eating. And he's only sleeping for what? Three days, three hours a day. When I ask if he wants to harm himself, what does he do? He shrugs his shoulder. What does that mean? You want to kill yourself? He said. I don't know. That's what it means. Client cannot stay at one place for assessment. So he's moving all along throughout the state. 
assessment. It shifted from what? One topic to another. Does that give you a clue? His mood was what? Elevated. And he's easily distracted. Very, very easily distracted. The parents reported that he has been cleaning the house for three days nonstop. He claimed to be a what? A movie star. Client was talking throughout the evaluation. Don't be surprised when you see this kind of question in your psyche, mental health. This is the way they presented a bunch of information you have to read. You don't know which diagnosis do you associate with it. Key fact, I've underlined them. Make sure the diagnosis you make, it has a collection, totality of the problem. There's a bunch of information there. I see distractibility, right? The client is easily distracted. He's shifting from one place to another, right? I see that he's very impulse. You know, he's buying things that he's not supposed to buy. He just bought a Tesla, right? I see that he said that what? He's a movie star, grandiosity, right? What does this see? Flight of ideas. He's shifting from one topic to another. Right? And his activity is all over the place. He's been cleaning the house nonstop. He can't sleep. He did not want to sleep. And he's talking throughout what? The evaluation. He has hallucination. He's not taking care of himself. Does that ring a bell? You see, I summarized the case. Key fact that I've given you. Broke up with his girlfriend, disheveled, all this group as one, taking care of him, not taking care of himself. You see dead people. He's having hallucination, right? Suicidal ideation. He shrouded his shoulder. His mood is elevated. He has a grandiose city saying he's the movie star. He's very talkative, talking throughout the And he's shifting from one topic to another. This is the kind of case they will give you. Classic, 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 well-known diagnosis for some mental health problem, right? 18 years old, present with erratic behavior, he withdrew from college. He broke up with his girlfriend. Parents are worried because he bought a te Tesla, probably he uses money for school fees to buy a Tesla. He's disheveled on presentation, he's missing several of his shirt button. He has no shower, not taking care of himself. He see dead people, he's hallucinating. He has no eating anything for three days and he's not sleeping either. When I asked if he, he, he can harm himself, he started to show that suicide ideation. He can't stay still. He's shifting from one topic to another. Mood is elevated, easily distracted. Imperial reported that he's been cleaning the house activity for three days nonstop. He claimed to be movie star, grandiose city, and he's talking throughout the evaluation. Do you see distractibility, impulse? Grandiosity, flight of idea, activity, sleep deficit, and talkative. That's dig fast. That's your diagnosis. Even though it's hallucinating, it's not the other diagnosis you're thinking about. Even though he has a grandiosity, it's not something you're thinking about that I know you've been saying. But this has a totality of a problem, of a diagnosis that you should know right now. This is the way they will present the case. Trust me, if I'm doing, I'm writing this test, this is the way I'll give you for this particular question. This is the way I'll present it to you for you to be able to figure out what kind of diagnosis is it. It's straightforward. So what you think is going on, you have to figure out yourself and figure out easily because I've, I've given you the, the keywords I like you to do adult learning, not feed you information sometimes, but you have to think about it. 
and say, hey, what is the, what is this? Adult learning require you sometimes you get to put things together, not to be spoon feed too much. He has hallucination. He has grandiosity. He he's not. He, he lacks self care. He has a bunch of things going on. Pressure speech. Symptoms of distractibility. Impulsiveness. Flight of idea. Not being able to sleep. Talking throughout the study. He can't still. Uh, he still. He can't sit still. What do you think? Your diagnosis. The ball is in your court. So. I like information that I need further in, in, intervention. I did that for you. Things that is very worrisome, right? He shrugged his shoulder when he asked him, okay, he's not eating, okay? Spending money buying Tesla is not good. He's disheveled on presentation. He's not taking care of himself. He has no shower for five days. That's not good, right? His mood, is elevated. That's not good. He's easily distracted. Okay, he's been cleaning the house for three days. That's not good. Claim to be movie star. That's hallucination. He's talking throughout it's the case. All this is consistent with dig fast with associated hallucination. So. Those are the things you have to highlight. They probably will highlight four or five of them or six of them, and you have to figure out the rest of them. Okay? So that's the that things you're supposed to do. Okay, so look at it, and when you think it's worrisome, yeah, in the test, they will highlight some of them, and they will ask you if you should worry about it. What is your diagnosis? What is your diagnosis? This is not depression. You can say it's not depression. This is not schizophrenia. Just because he has hallucination, just because he can't take care of himself, does not mean it's consistent with schizophrenia. For this, you need the positive and negative symptoms. The positive symptoms are hallucination, disorganized thought, right? Hallucination is disorganized or some things that it, it, it's not is consistent with the disease process. And the negative symptoms are usually those that is difficult to take care of, catatonic, you don't being able to take care of himself, depression, all those things. They have all depressive mood and stuff. But this guy is non schizophrenia. Look at his mood. Look at him talking. This refrainer patient will not be talking that long. It's, they are not easily distracted. They don't shift from one topic to another. They don't do that. They don't spend their money and buy a Tesla. Money for school, then he use it for what? Tesla. No, they're not going to do that. Well, yes, they will not shower. Okay, the address will not be okay. They may not be sleeping. But they won't be cleaning their house nonstop. Differential diagnosis. That's what we call differential diagnosis and some review of system that is going on. This is the way you break down the question. You say, no, this cannot be schizophrenia. He has all the signs and symptoms of what? Somebody that is above the top, above the top, he's talking, he's cleaning the house, he's not sleeping. If he has some hallucination, yeah, he has psychotic problem too, because that is associated with the problem. But he's talking throughout the procedure and he's not doing anything, spending money nonstop that he's not supposed to be doing. He left college and all of a sudden he does that. What this is it? This is obs ob this is not obsessive compulsive disorder, as I can see. It's not OCD. OCD. What is the key fact? If you watch, I have a bunch of mental health video free of charge, you can watch it and you never miss any question on mental health. I mean, it's straightforward the way it's presented. Obsessive compulsive disorder, they have some obsession, okay? That obsession, is, it gives them anxiety. And so they do some rituals to take away the anxiety, right? 
They worry about fire in the house. And so what did they do? They watch the stove and close and, and try to make sure the, the stove is off 10 times before they leave. So the ritual is the things they do to take away the anxiety. They lock their door 20 times because they are afraid somebody will steal their car. The obsession of the anxiety of somebody stealing the car. So they do some rituals. The rituals is the practice they do. There is nothing in the case that is consistent with that. You don't see anything about this guy doing multiple things to take away his anxiety. So that is wrong. It's not a schizophrenic patient. It's not a depression patient. The key word is to dig fast. Distractibility, impulsiveness, grandiosity, flight of ideas, activity increase, sleep deficit, and talkative. That, what do you think? That is your diagnosis. This is your diagnosis. And class is not going to tell you and you have to make it, and they will keep on giving you different cases, and you have to use it to follow. If you know your diagnosis, what is your priority? But this priority question is easy. What are we worried about? I know he has a problem, but for me, my priority for this patient is straightforward. If you look at the case, there's one you should pay attention to. He said something when they asked him, he did something else during the assessment. You got to read between the lines. They're not going to tell you. There's a bunch of priority in the case I've presented you, not taking care of self. All the things he's been doing is a priority. Yeah, we got to figure out. But which one can kill him? Which one of this can kill this patient? That means you have one second to figure it out, if you don't do that, he kill himself. When he asks him, this is what he said. When asked if he can, he will harm himself, he said he throws his shoulder. That's not good. That is suicide. If somebody doesn't answer that, consider him to have a suicidal ideation. Non-answering of a suicide question, it means you have to be serious. That patient. He has suicide ideation. If they shake their head, it doesn't include. Let them verbalize. No, I'm not going to kill myself and let them sign something. But shrugging your shoulder is not, shrugging your shoulder is a sign of badness. So there's no word called badness. But this guy is serious. So my priority is suicide watch or suicide ideation. Make sure I assess him completely. Make sure he's not suicidal. So that question required me to do that right so i hope by now you you figure out the diagnosis and I, i've tried to hide it so that you have to figure out yourself and then you can answer the question now you see the table and you figure out the answer choice right the table tells you what is the diagnosis this guy is a bipolar patient there's two types of bipolar. There is a bipolar one and bipolar two. Now, bipolar one, they have mania. Okay. So they have mania plus or minus depression. Bipolar two, they have hypomania plus depression. Right, so the difference between two, this maniac episode is very, very minimal. And so they, 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 they're not that bad compared to the, the story that I described it to you. So that is the difference, hypomania, and they both may have depression or not. And so bipolar one, the other thing too, bipolar one can have, they can have hypomanic episode, okay? Some of them can have hypomania. Some of them will be a full-blown mania. So this can be true, but most of hypomania is associated with bipolar too.
the mania usually is type one. It doesn't involve type two. Both of them can have depression or no depression. But the key thing is this psychotic functional impairment and hypomania between the two. So for many patients, they, they may have psychotic symptoms. That's what we saw. This guy is hallucinating, right? He has grandiosity, all those things is bad. Bipolar 2 don't do that. They both can have suicide ideation. There is no functional impairment in bipolar 2. So there's minimum functional impairment. Minimum, so usually you don't have to admit them to the hospital for maniac episode. This is the difference between the two. Okay, so if you see it somewhere, this is the, uh, the way to answer this particular question. Sometimes they will change it and they will put the different name there. Don't, don't let them trap you. Okay, it's the same thing. If you're taking a test and you see that they've changed, they don't put um, bipolar 2, it's the same thing. Um, what do you think? What is the name for bipolar 2? Sometimes you see it in test books. What do you guys think? It's the same thing, but some, some test book will change it and make it difficult You say, I've never heard this before. It's the same thing, it's bipolar too. What do you guys think? What do you call it? What do you guys think? So it's called cyclothermic. So if you if you see somewhere, this is the same thing. At CY cyclothermic disorder. It's the same thing as a bipolar two kind of yeah, they have hypomania and depression, very mild form of um, bipolar two. But this is the table you should be familiar with to be able to answer this question easily. And then uh, finally, we got to have a plan of care. What do you think? What are you going to do with this patient? Once again, look at the case, long case, 18 years old, erratic behavior. If you're just working, client has been doing well in college, he withdrew from our parent, no reason. He broke up with his girlfriend. The parents are worried because he bought a, a Tesla recently, probably used the money for the college to do that. He looked disheveled on presentation. He's missing several bottom of his shirt. He has no shower for five days. He see dead people walking. He has no eating anything and he's not sleeping, only sleeping three hours a day. When I ask if he's going to kill himself, he shrugged his shoulder. He cannot stay still for the exams. He shifted from one topic to another. Mood is elevated, right? He's easily distracted. Parents are worried because he's been cleaning the house for like three days nonstop. He claimed to be a movie star. He's talking throughout the procedure, the evaluation. So what is your plan of care? The plan of care is our content. If you know that this is a bipolar patient who is in the mania episode, then the rest of the story, you already know, of course. We know he has a suicidal ideation, so we got to supervise him, right? Supervision is very important. But what is the major problem? We saw him. You don't have to memorize this mental health problem. They will give you everything you think about it. He's not been sleeping. He's not been eating. He's disheveled. He has no bath for five days. Yeah, physical need. So provide his physical uh, need as much as possible. So. We got to give him food, right? Do you think this guy will sit down for uh, a good lunch? No, you can give him mashed potato and salad, sit down and let's eat and enjoy. You can take him to the cafeteria. He's moving so fast that he can do anything. So what do you do? Nutrition, just give him finger food. 
I call it finger food, food that he can hold it and eat it, but it's going to provide him high calorie, okay, and high protein diet. Do you have an example of that? These are the people, they will not sit down for you to feed them. So I call it finger food. We all eat finger food when we are in a hurry, when we do something. It's the same thing we do. Hey, you are in a hurry, you're going for a business walk, or you go to McDonald's and buy your shake and Big Mac while you're walking, you're chewing it. Yeah, so give them something they can eat, you know, shake, high protein, protein shake, finger food, burritos, something that you can carry, you know, you can take them to um, go and buy them Chick-fil-A, you know, they can carry it and just eat it while they're talking. So high calorie, high protein diet, but something they can carry. So if they give you a question, don't select anything that will require them to use a spoon, sit down and they eat. No, something they, they can be moving around, but at the same time, they will carry it and then they will eat it. Okay, so that's two. These people, they can be manipulative, so set limits. Okay, you gotta be like, you see as you think he's a movie star and you see dead people, you gotta break through that. So set the limits, this is the way we're going to do. He's been cleaning his house for the past three days, nonstop. He's not going to stop cleaning. So you gotta set limits, you say, hey, sir, we're going to sleep for two hours, Wake up this, you have to have a schedule. This is what we're going to do. You watch TV for two minutes, you go and sleep. So set limit, set limit, set limit. This guy is on fire. You know, it's like somebody who is on cocaine or epinephrine or something like that. The best way is to calm them down. I call them cool him down. When you see a bipolar question, say to yourself, I need to cool this guy down. If I don't cool him down, is in trouble, he's still on fire. We gotta cool him down. That's why we gotta give him finger food. That's why we wanna provide him physical need as much as possible. So low stimulation as much as possible. To provide low stimulation as much as possible. Of course, he has no bath, so personal hygiene is okay so that we can get him shaved up, you know, somebody shaved them up, and then we can do what we got to do, right? So those are the key, okay? Sometimes your board will try to trick you. Any food that will increase their energy, you should not use it, okay? Don't, don't like put them too much on fire, like coffee. If, if they put caffeine there, yeah. <laughs> Energy drinks, yeah, just take it away. It's a trap, okay? Even though it's going to, we're talking about high calorie, high protein, no energy drinks. You know, these have epinephrine or stimulants in them. It will put them in a higher form like what it is before. So just try to avoid that as much as possible, okay? Of course, suicide ideation, We are, you also want to check their weight, make sure they're maintaining their weight as much as possible. Okay, and that's something that you 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 should do because they don't eat it, they don't do anything, and of course they're going to get a mood stabilizer. Okay, to help with them. This is where people get confused. Okay, there's a bunch of medication you can use. You can use the good old lithium. Or the the other ones we all know, um, anti seizure medication, anti epileptic. Any of them is fair game, you know, like propric acid. You can use any of them, right? But you have to know how it's used and all the side effects they may ask you, especially lithium. Okay, um, I will talk about lithium. Just, I'm not going to go into details, but I, the, the only thing, if you don't forget, if you don't take anything from here, just know that lithium is this is like sodium. 
And if you remember your chemistry, okay, I don't want to take you there. You don't want to remember that. But if you look at the periodic table, science is makes sense. If science does not make sense to you about things, then you 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 have to go back and look at it. And that is the easy way for things to stick in your head. If you look at a periodic table, lithium and sodium, they are in the same group. They are group one metals. So when you take lithium, you're basically taking sodium. Have you asked yourself why they said, oh, if you on lithium, your sodium has to be a certain level? Yes, they have the same charges, okay? Plus one, same charges. So they can exchange with each other because they are in the same group. Okay, this is why it's very important. If you don't learn anything today, I won't, don't want you to forget this. I don't want you to forget it. I don't want you to forget that lithium exchange with sodium. And all you need to do, maintain your sodium to be normal. It does not need to go up. It does not need to go down. You see books and videos will tell you, oh, increase your sodium, decrease your sodium. It's all crap. It's wrong. Okay. Your sodium should be normal. Why? Look at what is going to happen. If they're going to exchange, if you take too much sodium, you're going to displace lithium and make it ineffective. When your lithium is low, what will happen to the patient? That's the one that presents. He will go into mania. If you decrease your sodium, we have more lithium. And what will happen? Lithium toxicity. I want you to take adequate amount of lithium so that there's no too much exchange of that. That is the key. Of course, there's a bunch of side effects. It, your thyroid, you become hypothyroid. It has other side effects, but in terms of the sodium, that people get trapped all the time. When you see answer choice, you say increase sodium intake. No, don't do. if you increase too much sodium, you're going to make lithium. You don't have to increase it too much. So for us, it's normal. Yeah, we are good. If your sodium is 140, 145, yeah. We are doing what we're supposed to do. I don't want your sodium to be 150, 160. That means then you're making the lithium ineffective. I don't want your sodium to be 120. That means you become what? Hyponatremic, you get sick from it. At the same time, you make lithium toxic. Normal level, maintain your sodium as much as possible, and that will take care of it. The other thing too is, you should not do anything that will affect your kidney. I try to give you guys some tips to, I mean, it's so that you don't have to memorize. I mean, you can watch any video you want, but if you watch a video, it doesn't give you those kind of things, pay attention carefully. You know, it, you have so many things to memorize, right? But why it's lithium, this is very important. They say don't increase your, increase your fluid intake. All those things is related to what? Kidney. It's getting rid of by the kidney. So hydrating yourself is related to lead kidney. So don't do anything that will affect your kidney. That's why you got to maintain hydration, two to three liters of water a day. That is why you should avoid ACE inhibitor. Okay. That's why you should avoid and say it. all these guys make your lithium kidney not happy so because they are affecting your kidney that's why you have to avoid them because when you affect your kidney you make lithium toxic because the kidney get rid of the lithium this is the basis of hydration avoid NSAID, avoid um ACE inhibitor and diuretic Hydrochlorothiazide. So if you see a question, it said this four things, yeah. Avoid NSAID, avoid um, ACE inhibitor, avoid 
and a diuretic and increase your fluid intake, maintain your sodium level. That's all. That's all I have to say about that. And finally, if they give you a question, when people come in with maniac episode like that, lithium takes some time to get the concentration that they needed. And therefore, don't be surprised if you see them on Respiridon or Zaprasidon. These are second generation antipsychotic. It can be used for maniac episode or bipolar episode. So don't worry about it because that can help with the hallucination and psychotic problem associated with these problems. So if you see a selector apply and you see a second generation antipsychotic and the patient is a maniac, yes, you can use it in a maniac episode. That is very, very key. Not the typical one. The typical one, um, you should avoid it. The, the, you should use the second generation, not the first generation. It's the atypical antipsychotic, uh, the one you can use for maniac patients. So select it. It's normal. It's a correct answer. Zaprasidone, olazapine, clozapine, respiridone, all second, second generation antipsychotic are fair game in the bipolar disorder because of uh, the psychotic overtone for that. And we can use it to stabilize them. At the same time, if you seek, if you see anti they give you propric acid. If they give you dilantifenitin, all anti, second um, anti seizure medication are mood stabilizers. I call them mood stabilizers rather than anti seizure medication. But yes, fine. So you can call it whatever you want, but remember they can also be used as a mood stabilizer. This is the question, Lithium 101. I hope you enjoy it. Good day and take care of yourself. All the best of luck. Good luck in your exams. And don't worry, if they give you a long question, just chill, just break it down like the way I've done it for you. But use your content to figure it out. You'll be fine. All the best of luck. Bye-bye.